This video looks at complex numbers as scaling and rotation operators. So the previous videos have shown how multiplication and division of complex numbers is easiest if you do it in modulus argument form. So what we want to do now is develop that theme by considering why is this useful for engineering problems. So the main focus here is to look at complex numbers as scaling and rotation operators because scaling and rotation are required in large numbers of engineering scenarios and therefore you'll find that complex numbers are useful in many of those scenarios. So just a reminder of the basics. Here's an Argand diagram and we've plotted a complex number z equals x plus jy and we just want to remind ourselves what do we mean by modulus or gain an argument or phase. So you see the modulus is the distance from the origin marked clearly here and phase is the angle between the positive real axis and a line drawn from the origin to the complex number. Now they can be calculated very easily. We can say the modulus here is the square root of x squared plus y squared, the phase tan to the minus 1 of y over x. And we will often write a complex number x plus jy in terms of its modulus r and its argument theta. Now, some background from the previous videos. We've shown that if you divide two complex numbers, then the modulus of the quotient is the quotient of the moduli. That's this formula here. The modulus of z over w is mod z over mod w. And the argument of the quotient is the difference of the arguments. So the argument of z over w equals arg z minus arg w. Now, similarly, we had rules for multiplication. So we said if you multiply two complex numbers, the modulus of the product equals the product of the moduli. And the argument of the product equals the sum of the arguments. Now, why are these rules so useful? Because you'll see that the arguments or the, the formula we've got that are linked to moduli are essentially scaling operators. We can scale a complex number by multiplying by another complex number and the scaling is the modulus of what we multiply or divide by. So you'll notice here I've got mod z and then I've divided or scaled by mod w or over here I've got mod z and I've multiplied by mod w so that's the scaling. What about the rotation? You can see that when I divide I do a negative rotation because instead of having the argument of z, I've moved in a clockwise direction by the argument of w because I've gone minus arg w. If I multiply two complex numbers, you can see I'm rotating in an anti-clockwise direction because I'm going from arg z to arg z plus arg w. Okay, so let's demonstrate that with an example. What's the impact of multiplying one complex number by another. So first of all, let's mark a complex number on the system. So if I've got um, a 1 here, and a 2 here, and an i here, and then you could have a 2i up here, and where's my complex number? It's here. Okay? And the current argument is pi by 4. Now I want to know Alright, so there's my original complex number there. And I want to know what's the impact of multiplying by this other complex number. And what I've done is I'm going to cross that and I'm going to look at this other complex number in modulus argument form. So it's got a modulus, the square root of 0 0.5. Now, for those people who don't like it, that's the same as 1 over root 2, if that makes it easier for you to work with. Okay, and it's got a phase of pi by 4. So I'm going to multiply, okay, so I think that comes up here. You can see I've got a magnifying factor of 1 over root 2. In other words, I'm going to make it smaller. I've got a rotation factor of pi by 4, so I'm going to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. There's my rotation by pi by 4. So I, that's my rotation. And I'm going to shrink because it's multiplied by 1 over root 2. So where do you end up? Well, what you end up is if you rotate by pi by 4, you're going to end up on the imaginary axis. 
because I've shrunk it by 1 over root 2, I'm going to end up here with a modulus of 1 because the original modulus was root 2. So what you've done is you've shrunk it from a modulus of root 2 to a modulus of 1 and you've rotated it so the argument instead of being pi by 4 is now pi by 2. Now if you were to multiply those two together you could very easily demonstrate to yourself that this is in fact what you get. You get 1 times the argument pi by 2. So let's do a number of s simple examples so you get the picture. We're going to take a complex number z here it is, 3 arg minus 70, and we're going to multiply it by w, and we want to interpret that as a rotation and a scaling. So first of all, let's mark z down. Oh, that's probably not quite right. Let's just move it across a bit. So there we go. Let's make that point there z, which equals 3 arg minus 70. And we want to know <coughs> what's the impact of multiplying by w which is 2 arg minus 40. So first of all, the magnifying factor is 2. So we're going to get twice as big. So perhaps if I just stretch this out, if I was to make it twice as big, I would end up with 6 arg minus 70. OK, so that's the stretching which we get from the 2. We're also going to rotate by an angle minus 40 which means in a clockwise direction. So we're going to end up all the way over here with 6 arg minus 110. And so there is where we end up. So you can see we've interpreted our multiplication by w as a stretching or a scaling followed by a rotation. And there's the answer. So w equals 6 arg minus 110. Another example then. Take the complex number A and divide it by H. So here's A is 1.2 arg 110. So let's mark that somewhere around here. So that can be 1.2 arg 110. There's 110 degrees. Now we want to know what happens if we divide by H. So first of all, if I'm dividing by h, you'll see the scaling factor is now 1 over 0.6, because I'm essentially dividing by 0.6. So what happens if I divide 1.2 by 0.6? I'm going to end up basically at 2. So I'm going to stretch it to here, 2 arg 110, if I divide by 0.6. What about the phase? you can see the phase of h is minus 40. So if I divide by h, I'm actually rotating by plus 40. And so therefore, I'm going to rotate it this way by 40 degrees. And I'm going to end up over here with a over h equals 2 arg 140. And here's a different example then. Find the impact of division. So we've got a complex number w, and I want to divide by q. So w equals 2, and the argument is 200. So let's first of all write that one down. So that's going to be over here, somewhere like that. So there's w equals 2 arg 200. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by q. So if I divide by q, the effective scaling, the rotation, is a third. So I'm going to magnify it by a third. So if I do that, I'm going to end up down here somewhere with 2 over 3 arg 200. So that's the effect of the scaling, or the magnifying factor. And then, of course, I've got the rotation factor. I'm dividing by Q, so it means the impact is to subtract 80 degrees. So that's a clockwise rotation, which is going to take me over here. So I've moved clockwise by 80 degrees, so I'm going to end up with 2 over 3 arg 120. And there's your answer. 
So some conclusions. We've shown that multiplication and division of complex numbers can be, and that's a key word, it doesn't have to be, can be interpreted, interpreted as scaling and rotation operators. Now scaling and rotation will be needed for electrical circuit analysis, control systems and many other topics in engineering.